Piotr Piotrowski, in a book, Art and Democracy in Post-Communist Europe, writing about art in the public space after 1989, introduced the term agoraphilia, which means in this context, and I'm quoted, the drive to enter the public space, the desire to participate in that space, and to shape public life, to perform critical and design functions for the sake of and within the social space. Uh, what's it, what it's interesting that the word uh, agoraphilia only appears in the Polish title of the book on the, your left side, and uh, this word uh, isn't uh, in the uh, foreign pub publication. Uh, the researcher opposed agoraphilia understood uh, as a set of practices in the public sphere, such as the critic of the status quo undertaken with the goal of reshaping the social organize, with the agoraphobia which is responsible, among others, for subordination the public sphere to the ideological doctrine. According to Piotrowski, agoraphilia is supposed to be a characteristic feature of the situation in Poland and other countries of post-communist Europe after 1989. Art historian wrote about 1989 as a turning point which significantly changed the nature of artistic activities in the 1990s in Poland. Before 1989, it is said about the appropriation of public space by the apparatus of power, control, controlled and therefore limited access to this space by citizens, which for some researchers is synonymous with the lack of public space at all. During the communist period, three zones of the public and private can be distinguished. Public space, private space, and second public sphere, which was the space of functioning of artists, intelligentsia, and people associated with independent culture. All of the above mentioned spaces were, uh, to some extent, supervised by the state. During the transformation period, the character of public space changed as a result of the introduction of a democratic system. Access to public space was open to citizens and thus to artists and private property restored. As it seemed, uh, this moment should be used to reshape the public sphere in a nascent democratic state, but as I will try to show later, its potential has not been fully exploited. This does not mean that no such attempts have been made, and performance work is a good example here. With the introduction of the free market economy, a new art market in Poland was starting to develop. New institutions and exhibition spaces were created, were created with, which also belonged to the public space that was reshaping at that time. Uh, Polish cultural researcher Ewa Majewska in the article Ewa Partum or Feminism that is yet to come polemizes with Piotrowski. Majewska draws attention to the important issue of the lack of theoretical discussion on public art in Poland despite the creation of many works and the opening of the public sphere and new possibilities for conducting such a debate. An important issue is also the fact that the collapse of the Eastern Bloc sets out specific dates in history, but the transition process itself is not a point in history, but a longer process whose frames are still difficult to determine. Another issue raised by the researcher is the political agency of art, which is important to me because of the characteristics of performative art. The possibility of change is one of the categories of cultural performance, which, in my opinion, was one of the tools used by artists, in this case Teresa Murak and Eva Partum, to shape their political identity in various historical moments. Polish sociologist Elżbieta Matenia, in the book Performative Democracy, referring to the concept of Hannah Arendt and Mikhail Bakhtin, creates a concept of performative democracy in which citizens can actively influence the shape of the state and create the space of visibility that are in 
an indispensable factor for the constitution of the public sphere and consequently democracy. Matenia, after Arendt, writes about the so-called space of visibility, uh, which could be transformed into space of action and public discussion. The author has seen these activities in underground theater and writing during the communist period, but this concept, concept can be applied also to performative activities. Whereas, John Mackenzie in the book Performerals from Discipline to Performance writes about the performance of democracy by citizens in everyday life and he attributes the high effectiveness of changes in the social sphere to the cultural performance. There is no doubt that the year 1989 is a historic breakthrough and crucial beginning for the formation of the public sphere in Poland as a result of a change in the political system, but it was only the starting point for a difficult and heterogeneous process. Polish society was in the new reality of shaping the democratic system, which was connected with the formulation of civil society and a new political identity of citizens. Along with building democracy, a free market economy was introduced. Most researchers emphasize the unequal opportunities of various social groups in the face of capitalism. During the political transformation, the most affected group are women who initially try to fight for their particular rights. In 1993, after many public discussion uh, and protests, the law came into effect which introduced the ban of legal abortion. It turns out that gender issues are pushed aside for the benefit of the general and universal aspirations towards democracy. Uh, in the book mentioned at the beginning, Piotrowski emphasized that the masculine basis of the democratic political transformation is not only evident in Poland, but through the former Eastern Europe and may very well be one of the main characteristics of the post-communist societies. How am I trying to show, due to the change in the political system, paradoxically Polish women have disappeared from the public space by gradually marginalizing their social political potential? The question that I would like to ask is, how this situation is reflected in the performance art after 1989, uh, most of in the beginning of the 90s, and is agoraphilia visible in the action of women artists in the early 90s? At the beginning of the 1990s, the best way to shape a young democracy seemed to be to cut off everything related to the previous oppressive system. The gaps of the ideology of the previous system were quickly filled by the church associated so far with the struggle for freedom and right of citizens and therefore the right wing's ideologies began to be pushed through in the public discussion. As Elżbieta Matenia writes in the article Woman After Communism, A Bitter Freedom, what for the poorest citizens during the communist era was the spur of freedom, in this case, church in Poland, in the new reality has become a spur of constraint for women. The second paradox of the first years of democracy in Poland, which is noticed by the author, is the focus on human rights in general, but omit omitting women's particular rights. During the, during the transformation process, women citizens were deprived of their identity, just as in the previous political system. But earlier, the apparatus of power treated all citizens in this way, regardless of gender. Isabella Kowalczyk, describing the situation of female artists after 1989, confirms that the 90s brought beyond the fulfillment of dreams of freedom, the pinning of social divisions and poverty, which more affected women, including children, as well as limiting their rights. The economic crisis in the early 90s significantly deepened the differences between women and men in their social and professional status. Kowalczyk emphasized that the social situation of women has been marginally reflected in the art of the 90s. 
Moreover, the problem of poverty, work, violence and deepening social divisions were almost absent in both feminist art and the critical art at that time. The women artists were subject to double discrimination as women embroiled in a system of art strongly dominated by men and a professional group who lost their political transformation. It should be noted, however, that in 1982, Eva Partum left Poland for West Berlin and thus began to function in a different artistic environment on the other side of the wall. At the same time, Teresa Murak was involved with the political opposition gathered around the Catholic Church and also took part in underground exhibition organized, by, organized in church spaces in Poland. In 1989, Teresa Murak and Eva Partum were in a completely different political and artistic context. Both artists who born at the end of the 40s and in the 70s belonging to the circle of Polish neo-avant-garde art entered the 90s from two different perspectives. Uh, in 70s, uh, Partum chose the public space as the area of her activity. Part of her works was related to the identification of a woman in the public space of a communist state. The artist not only stepped into an accessible space with her art, but also created the action space itself, which is address gallery, uh, which today can be called the second public sphere. Before leaving for Berlin, mainly operated with her naked body in order to convey, convey feminist content, treating the body conceptu conceptually as a sign. Uh, and in one of the interviews, she, says, she said that combined conceptualism and feminism in the sense that she became a tautological feminist sign. In capitalist Berlin, where, uh, as the artist says, everything uh, was so money-oriented, she had to reach for new means of expression because nudity was the product of consumption and it destroyed the context. As she said, I could walk through the crowd in words of naked, but here in Berlin, I couldn't because I would immediately meet somebody who was also naked, but for different reasons. After leaving Poland in 1982, in the new political and social reality, Partum began to function in a new art circulation as a migrant artist from the East in a Western democratic state where art works in accordance with the principles of the free market. The artist acted mainly in the institutional space in art galleries commenting on the existing reality. She returns to the action in public space when recreating her performances from the 70s. Eva Partum has repeatedly referred to the issue of public space in her art. I uh, look at her uh, works, The Legality of Space and Self-Identification. Um, as an attempt to enter an inaccessible public space in the previous political system. During the performance, the artist created a new performative public space to which she invited other participants in social life. The performance self-identification took place not only through photomonter, but also a short action at the opening of the exhibition, during which the undressed artist went out onto the street. Partum twice did a reenactment of her work, The Legality of Space, from uh, 71, uh, the first time in the new historical and spatial context at the Vispa Art Institute in Gdańsk, and the second time in the same square in Woods, uh, this time giving the audience a voice. And this is in the uh, left photo. In 1984 and 1990, she performed concert of her first in Berlin at Weverka Gallery, then at the opening of the retrospective exhibition of Polish contemporary art Bakunin in Dresden, in Kunstmuseum in Düsseldorf, Germany. The naked artist 
Bending Over the Gramophone, playing Chopin's piano concert performed by Rubinstein, cuts off her hair at the same time, voicing her delight with the music she listens. The hair falling onto the vinyl disc stops the recording, which ended the performance. The artist deals with the Polish myth of romanticism and the concept of genius, which, as we know, was historically attributed to men. It is one of the last time when artists performed naked. Both versions of the performance differ in time and place, but also in the context in which the artist is. The first version was made in private gallery uh, in Berlin, where Partum, as an immigrant from the East, was doing an artistic career. The second, during the vernissage of the exhibition, summarizing the condition of Polish art at a, at a crucial historical moment. At the exhibition, Partum showed large format uh, photographs from the documentation of the performance uh, at the Berlin Wall Ost-West Shadow, from 1984. Uh, Teresa Murak, in contrast to Partum, from the very beginning uh, has cut herself off from feminist and feminist reading of her art. However, most, most of her work is focuses on femininity and sensuality. Artist consciously refers to Christian aesthetics, introduces elements such as the cross and adoration of church holidays. The artist's work works between public and private because, the, um, because are based on very intimate activities in the private space of the artist, in her apartment, in the bathtub, uh, etc but also a close relationship between the artist's body and organic matter, Cress, Live and Moon, which are later introduced into public space as a trace, documentation of uh, these intimate actions. Teresa Moraclay Partum repeats her works in a various space and context. Um, the picture uh, on your left comes from 1974, the second from 1990. In both photographs, we can see the Teresa Murak in a coat made of a fabric characteristic of the artist, all covered with crest. First performance, procession, it was a two hour walk along the streets of Warsaw. In an interview, the artist mentions that crossing the street of Warsaw in this year, uh, in her original outfit was her private political manifestation. The next work, Sewings, is a series of several performances in telephone boxes in various cities in Budapest, Łódź and Warsaw. Many of Murak's works from the 70s were performed in public spaces. These spaces were created during performances like Easter Carpet or Sculpture of, for Earth, while in the early 90s, the artist began begins to hide herself and she withdrew from the public space with her activities. During this period, the artist chose more intimate spaces for her performance, performances, like clothes of the visitants uh, and sewings, uh, and she also created more installations. In Telephone Box, the artist returns to the activity from 70s, but the politi political and social situation is different, uh, just like the artist's attitude. The box that she chose stands on Platz Bankowy, which she passed in 1974 in a coat of grass. The artist entered a booth, an element of Polish um, everyday life, allowing long-distance communication in the previous system, but instead, but instead of using it, she blocked that space by preventing access. And the artist is silent instead of having a conversation, which can be read as an attempt to draw attention to the difficulties in establishing a dialogue at that turbulent time. In the first, uh, first years of the transition, as a result of the reshape of the political system and the market economy in Poland, 
women have become marginalized, which is reflected in the artistic activities of those years. Due to the changing status of public space in Central and Eastern Europe, under the influence of historical and political events, the action of artists in this space or withdrawal from it should be considered in terms of a political gestures. So, thank you.